hey guys welcome back so this obviously is not a video that I wanted to film and I've put it off for a long time I've literally tried filming it so many times and I struggle every single time to do it um, but it's obviously something I have to let you guys know and you deserve to know and I want to let you know I was sharing the beginning of this pregnancy with you and the whole journey with it and um, you know I have to share this with you as well and I knew that if this did happen regardless of when it happened um, that it would be something that I wanted to share and go along with you guys as well because I know so many women unfortunately have this happen and it's really isolating and it can feel really lonely and it's still such a stigma and like stigma stigmatized topic and conversation that it's not had very often and it's told just to be strong and kind of shove it under the rug and I didn't want that and so here I am sitting down and making this video um, for those of you who might have stumbled upon this video and have never seen my channel before I know sometimes if you are currently going through the situation sometimes you seek out other videos um, or if you are just sometimes we just find things that and click on them because they look interesting or whatnot just welcome um, if you're currently going through the situation or have gone through a situation um, I'm so sorry but I'm glad you're here my name is Sarah and I currently already have two other daughters my oldest is Olive and she's five and my youngest is Eleanor and she's three and this was our third little baby um, all over this was our fourth pregnancy so I mentioned before in between pregnancies between this pregnancy and Eleanor I had an early loss um, my doctor and I talked about that and it being a chemical pregnancy so it was really really early and those are actually incredibly common um, I think something I'd read that was like 50% um, of chemical pregnancy or pregnancies can be like chem can considered chemical pregnancies in the beginning because it happens before implantation um, I just happened to take a test really early and that's something that's kind of an issue with early testing is you get really excited because you can see a second line but it doesn't mean that it'll stick and implant and so it's kind of what happened so it was a really early loss and with those type of losses chemical pregnancies at least um, they're not only reported in like the whole of your miscarriage history um, because they're so common and they're not necessarily a reason for concern as like if your body's if that makes any sense I don't know I don't know anyway so right now we're just gonna focus on this being my full miscarriage I guess my my number one um, and to kind of put it un luckily on the docket um, uh, everything was great um, everything was going fine all of my scans were amazing he was growing perfectly um, my abdomen uterus height was growing great um, his heartbeat was right on the like just amazing always really really easy to find like everything was just going really really well um, I was put on antibiotics pretty much probably for the remaining of the pregnancy because of UTIs which I get really easily when I'm pregnant um, and are really common for pregnant women to get but they can um, go south really quickly and with my first pregnancy we didn't catch one in time and I got a really bad kidney infection I was in the hospital and so they can get bad really fast and so um, my last pregnancy I was on antibiotics for the remaining part of my pregnancy too so I know that um, this is common and something that's practiced and not what caused this issue or anything but I had gone for that appointment like a week and a half before my next appointment and everything was great his heartbeat was great you could hear him moving around I was measuring wonderfully just with the UTI which was like only the biggest issue um, and that was really more for me because it hadn't caused anything for him um, and then spring forward about a week and a half later um, I have a Doppler I mentioned that in my past two pregnancy videos and I still stand by my Dopplers I still think they're great I know that they can cause unneeded anxiety but in this 
specific situation, it did what it was needed to do. And so I will continue to use it my next pregnancy, God willing. Um, anyway, I found his heartbeat, I think about eight and a half, nine weeks pregnant, and I've been able to find it pretty just consistently ever since. I've never really had an issue. Sometimes there'll be like moments where it takes me a couple extra minutes or I'll just get up and try again later. That was especially true in the early days. Um, but later on, it was just like bing, bang, boom, there he is. Um, really fast, really easy. I had stopped checking his heartbeat so regularly just because I didn't feel like I needed to anymore. Um, a lot of my anxiety had really dissipated for the most part. I was in a safe zone, I was in my second trimester, and really like going, you know, steadily pretty far. I was waiting to feel him move. Um, I just didn't feel. I didn't feel a need to check it every single day, and I knew it was not good to check it every single day. Um, and it had been a couple days, this was Sunday, it had been a couple days, I think the last time I hit, heard his heartbeat and looked for it was either Thursday or Friday, I can't remember which day, but it was one of those days. This That week had been really stressful. My husband was um, currently doing a big merger with the company he's in, and he was just working like crazy hours. and. It was a really long week. I was um, taking care of like all the responsibilities and this was like the first time that I was really doing that since I had been pregnant um, because I was so sick and so it was just exhausting week. Um, and so I think I remember checking Thursday or Friday, I can't remember, and then Sunday came around and I knew I had my 16 week appointment that following Monday, that Monday. Um, so I decided that morning, I was like, I'm just gonna check it. I'd normally like to check for the heartbeat before the appointment just because it puts me at ease not that it really means any signal of health obviously or anything but it just it's just I'm not a doctor so this is the best comfort I can give myself before an appointment I guess um, and so I l listened for the heartbeat on, on Sunday morning and this is before I got up to pee before I ate anything before I did anything and I couldn't find it um, I panicked a little bit, but I thought like, you know what, maybe I just need to pee. Sometimes, you know, some people find it better on a full bladder, some find a heartbeat better on an empty bladder. It really didn't make a difference for me, but I thought maybe just a weird day, weird morning. I just woken up, maybe he was sleeping somewhere weird. Um, and decided to eat something sweet and drink something really cold and hopefully getting him to move. So I had breakfast. Um, and then I listened again and I still couldn't find it. And that's when I really started to kind of panic um, because it had never been like this before. Of course, I started Googling and researching things and people said, you know, sometimes you could have a placenta in the, um, instead of being in the back, it'll be in the forward part of your uterus and the baby can hide behind it and it'll mask it and you can't hear the heartbeat and all of this stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's that, it's that. It has to be that, right? And it definitely felt like my placenta had been moving upwards obviously with everything but felt like it had definitely gotten louder than it used to be but that could have just been growth um so i was like that makes sense you know and i totally felt comfortable with that idea but then i still couldn't find it and so people would say like you know maybe go and move around check later do all these things and i never could find it throughout that day and i just there's something that was just within me that i just knew that things were not okay. It's just like my mom instinct just knew in my gut that it wasn't good. Um, I, I've mentioned this before in my videos, but I struggle really bad with anxiety, generalized anxiety, but also incredible health anxiety. Um, and with my health anxiety, it typically centers around fear of cancer. Um, with my health anxieties, I can go to the doctor and be worried, sick about, you know, some cancer or something and be convinced before I leave the house that I have it. But on the way to the doctor, at the doctor, there's a sense of like safe, safety and relief. And it's like, I know in the back of my head that I, I don't have it. It's like my body just needs, or like my mind feels like it just needs to just hear it or just go there. It's like a fix or something. Um, and I know once I then get there and I start feeling silly, like I don't wanna go talk to them about this, I instantly know that I don't have it. Because 
I mean, and I know it's not the same for everyone. I'm not trying to like convince anyone not to go to the doctor if they were they have cancer or any sort of illness. Of course, go to the doctor. But just with someone who has health anxiety and goes, would go all the time or be convinced of like just random things. It's just there's something that knew I knew when I'd go to the doctor and I start feel at ease and like start feeling really silly. Then it's like okay, I know that this is my anxiety acting up. And I started really being able to learn that and be able to stop myself from going to the doctor initially in the first place and been like, okay, if this persists, persists for another week and it's getting, it's getting worse or whatnot, give myself like a good, just, I don't know, chunk of time before I try to go to the doctor all the time. Um, but with this, it wasn't that, like it wasn't like a health anxiety, it wasn't anxiety in general. It was like just a guttural, knowledge that something wasn't okay and for the whole rest of the day i just struggled so badly and i kept reading and hoping and reading online and reading pregnancy forums and all these things and you know well, most of the majority of women everything was totally fine but there were a number of women that it wasn't okay um and i kept being like that's going to be me like i just knew what i was trying to like plan things out and trying to ease I guess the pain that I already knew was gonna start I don't know how to express just knowing but I just knew I don't know um my OB's nurse who happens to be his wife she's amazing and she um said that like it's really common um that she hears this a lot that it's just like a motherly instinct that just happens and um Anyway, so the whole rest of Sunday, I still kept looking. It would be like there would be so much panic and just fear when I wasn't looking, but then it's like I would get like a sprig of hope right before I use the Doppler again, just hoping I would find it. It would. It was like at 3.30 in the morning um, that night, and I was out on the living room couch covered in head to toe, like literally my head was covered through my feet with a blanket, trying not to wake anybody up and muffle the sound and just looking for so long that my stomach was so sore the next day and God forbid he was totally okay, like I would have been so upset with myself because I looked so long and it wouldn't have been good but I just knew that it wasn't okay so I just kept hoping um, and searching and so Monday came and my husband luckily had the day off which was just kind of crazy too because he'd been working so much that um, his boss ended up just being like hey you need to you know take a day off and so he did and he was able to go to the appointment with me and actually go inside for the ultrasound which is the first time that my OB offered for that because they've been really good about you know social distancing and just being really careful and not that they weren't being careful but you know what I'm saying they were loosening up some of the restrictions and so he was able to go to the appointment with me that day. And before any of this had happened, before I couldn't find the heartbeat, our biggest fear was that the gender was wrong because we had done the um, clinical sneak peek blood test. And I kept had, I kept seeing on my pregnancy forums that they got the clinical blood test wrong and stuff. So that was our biggest fear. It was like, we got it wrong, you know, this is kind of embarrassing or we planned for a boy, just stupid things that I wish I could go back and be like, this, that was like the stupidest thing. I wish I could just change it and it, that had been the problem. Um, anyway, so Monday came, normally my appointments were like the first appointment of the day, but whatever reason that day, I got like the last appointment of the day. And so the whole entire day, I was just in constant like anxiety mode. I was so anxious. Like I just, it was so hard for me to get through the day. Um, my husband was forever the optimist and when situations like this happen, he is happens, he's always so good about trying to be level-headed and kind of focus and think the best and be positive, which helps me because in these situations, it's normally worst case scenario in my head where it's the opposite for him. And then in life, normally I'm a lot more positive, so it's kind of funny how that works out. But um, he was just really positive and it's like it's probably just a doppler like things are fine like everything's okay and we go in there and i initially tell the tech who's going to do the ult ultrasound that um i'm really anxious and i'm on edge and um i wasn't able to find his heartbeat with the doppler and i know dopplers are controversial to have at home but you know that's just where i'm at and so i'm kind of nervous 
and so if I'm acting a little off that's why and I just kind of wanted to prep her too um I don't know I don't know anyway she was like this is totally normal don't worry this happens all the time I can't tell you how many times this happens and moms get so scared and so nervous but nine times out of ten everything's totally fine and you're so far along and so I got a lot more at ease um husband came in he sat down we were holding hands she um put the probe on my stomach and my husband kind of took a breath because it was the first time he my husband took a breath because it was the first time that he had seen him um because he couldn't go to any of the ultrasounds and so he didn't notice anything was wrong as he just saw this perfect little person with all little toes and fingers and little chin and nose and head and he was just excited but I instantly noticed that he wasn't moving and I couldn't see his heart flickering and I didn't want to have to tell the tech I didn't want her to have to say it because I'm sure that's like the worst part of her job so I just said like I don't see his heartbeat I don't see his heart beating and he's not moving but she just held my hand and said, I'm so sorry, I don't see it either. <laughs> she continued to look for a while, just, I guess, to, for hopes. I don't know, I think we just both knew that. She called my OB in and then he looked too for a bit. And then we went to an exam room We just cried. And I think my husband was in shock because I think he, he really thought everything was gonna be okay. He really truly thought it was and so I think he just felt so shocked and so like confused. But I felt like I had prepared myself and I had put away Some of his like clothes, I just got them. And... <laughs> Little gifts and things that I put it away uh, before we left for the appointment because I just, I had so much fear that it wasn't gonna be okay and I didn't wanna come back and see them. So I'd put away everything and I had all this stuff and it's just, I don't know. It's just such a weird thing. I've never done something like that before and I felt so, like I just knew I needed to protect my like heart or something. Like I just needed to take care of things and hide them. <laughs> so my Obi came in and he was so shocked and sad and literally I think he had a lot of guilt um, because he just couldn't understand what happened. And it's like he kept checking the paper to see if he missed something and he, I asked him how often this happens. Um, in his practice and he said these types of losses this late are so rare for him and it's maybe one to two times a year maybe and so it just I don't know I started crying more because it just felt like of course it had to be me like not that I would want it for anybody else but it just like of course of course that's what happened and um we started talking about our options and with being this far along there's not a whole lot um I could go into labor by myself and then go into the hospital but basically my body just needed to go into labor um full on it wouldn't be like an early loss I would have to go through contractions my water would have to break all of those things um being this far along also already having two c-sections it could it just could be really dangerous and a lot of blood loss could happen and so that was not something one i wanted to do at all like i the, just the thought of going into labor and like god forbid i'd be with my kids my girls and i'd be home and i just i didn't want to traumatize them or myself even more and then my other option was to um induce labor at the hospital 
But once again, I've already had two C-sections and um, that can cause like a uterine rupture. Once again, more profound blood loss. Just, it just, these options just kept sounding scarier and scarier. And also just like, I'd have to be, it's labor. Cause I asked him like, okay, is it short? Like, because he's still so small, like what's it gonna look like? And he's like, it's, it's labor. You'll have to be given pain meds if you want it, like an epidural. <laughs> It takes a long time because your body's not ready to go into labor yet. It doesn't really understand. So we start these contractions. It can t take a number of days for it to go and happen. And then once you're actually in active labor, it can take uh, like 10 hours or so. And I just emotionally, I just didn't think that I could do that and handle it. And I just, I don't know. I just thought it would be way too traumatic and... I feel kind of broken because I never got to see, see him, but, but at the same time, I just don't think I could have done it. And I was really scared of the consequences and not being able to have another child had something gone wrong and we would have had it done a C-section or something. And anyway, so uh, my last option was a D&E. So normally in early uh, miscarriages, or pregnancy terminations, you can have a, you get a DNC. Now, when you're farther along, it's a DNE, um, and a lot of doctors don't like to do them past I think like 14 weeks, 15 weeks, 16. I think you can go up to 20 or 21, um, but most doctors really don't like to because of the risks. And it, my OB said that a lot of doctors won't even, 16 weeks is pretty risky too. So he didn't know um, if anybody, specialist around the area would be willing to do it. But he was going to try everything he could to find somebody that he trusted and would be willing to do it for me. Um, because that was the, I guess, best option in my head. It would be under general anesthesia. Um... I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have to feel any pain. I wouldn't have to go into labor. I wouldn't have to see a lot of blood loss. I wouldn't, it would have just been the best option. Luckily he found somebody he's worked with for over 30 years who we trust. And um, they were also gonna do it in a convenient with a sonogram the whole entire time to make sure they got everything out. Um, and that's what we ended up going with. And I'm so glad that I did that option because I think it was definitely the best for me personally. Um, but I totally understand if you're in the same situation and you don't feel like it is the right one for you. But for us, that was the best option. And I'm, I am so thankful that that could have, that happened because I, I, the thought of literally going into labor was giving me so much anxiety and fear and sadness. And, um, anyway, so basically the next day, um, I had to go get i think they're called laminaria basically put in my cervix so my cervix would start to dilate um because it could be that could have an issue with dnc's is um issues you could hurt your cervix so they had to cut it or they have to slowly open it so i had to take um i had that place in my cervix was so painful i didn't expect it to be painful and it was so painful but my doctor said that it looked like I was already bleeding a little bit and my cervix was opening itself so um it looked like it was gonna happen pretty soon anyway i had to take i think it's called misoprostol um and they normally give these pills to you also if you have an early loss in the beginning um if you prefer to go the pill route and take it at home um but this dose they gave me was just a lot smaller of a dose I took one at night one in the morning and it just once again is supposed to help like basically make your cervix open um I was in a lot of pain that night I was having a lot of cramping um I was concerned that I would start bleeding um heavily but luckily that never happened but I was just concerned um I was in a lot of pain I took some pain medicine um I used a heating pad and I was able to kind of just force myself to go to sleep um, my doctor said I could take my anxiety medicine and I hadn't taken it obviously my whole pregnancy and it did help me to be able just to fall asleep. Um, woke up the next morning, went in and had my D&E and 
everybody there was so kind and I'm so thankful for the team that I got, the anesthesiologist, just the interns that was working, the surgeon interns, um, my, even my OB came up and wanted just to be part of it too, which made me feel so much better that he was going to be there. Um, and it, it made it a lot better, for lack of better words, because everybody was just so understanding. <laughs> They kind and they would kind of like whisper and to me because they didn't want to say it loudly and they were just really kind um it happened really fast it was like i said i was under general anesthesia so i didn't feel anything during surgery uh, unfortunately afterwards they have to give you pitocin which causes contractions and they do that to induce labor and afterwards um so your uterus will contract and kind of stop blood flow and that caused a lot of pain um, during recovery, so they had to give me um, some pain medicine. But other than that, everything went well. Um, and I've just been recovering since. So, as of right now, there's still no reason. We have no idea why his heart stopped beating. I have a lot of guilt. Which I know I've heard is really normal. Because I felt like I should have kept him safe. That I didn't. But, um, I did everything I was supposed to do, and I know that my OB said that it's not my fault, but I just, you just, do you feel like it is? Um, I've been anemic for a while, which I'm always anemic during pregnancy, so. That's not super rare, but I kind of keep going back and forth like, is that it? Like, was I not doing a good enough job with my iron? Like, I look like uh, just so pale and dark circles and bruises and I'm looking rough. Even now, and I'm still struggling to get my body back. Um, anyway, I don't even know if I mentioned this happened when he was 16 weeks yeah i did mention that so um this late of a loss normally they look for issues with the mom rather than issues with the baby because normally if there's like a chromosome abnormality it happens in the first trimester and then second trimester there could be other reasons that are going on um so i talked to my ob about that possibility um but we did like such extensive testing and blood work before I even got pregnant because as you guys know we were trying for a year and nothing ever came back. I've had two healthy girls pregnancies beforehand um, and so he thinks that if something was wrong genetically um, that wouldn't have happened. It w this was just more, for lack of better words, a fluke and that something probably wasn't developing and correctly but he just was like kept on going and growing and um, they, we did send off the placenta and the fetus for testing and to see if there were any abnormalities. Um, I do plan on seeing a specialist just to make sure and kind of check everything before we do get pregnant again because I really don't want to go through this loss again. I think that a big a big reason why this feels like so much harder is because I had so much faith that this was going to be like our rainbow and our little special like, gift and promise from my dad who passed away and so many people had said that and it feels so good to hear something like that because when you lose someone you love so much you just want to be connected so it felt like that's so true right like <laughs> So with this happen, it felt like almost betrayal. Like it just, it hurt so bad. It hurt so much more than I thought it could ever hurt. And this type of grief is so much different even than the grief for my dad. And I thought that was so hard and it is, and it still is, but it's just like this grief is so different. And as a woman, like there's so many things you biologically have to go through and my hormones kind of plummeting, my body trying to get back to normal, this like emptiness and going from being pregnant to not being pregnant. There's just like, there's just levels. There's so many things you constantly have to battle and keep going through. Um, 
we do plan on trying right away whenever we can um my ob said after my first healthy cycle we're able to start trying again um so i'm going to continue on this journey and hopefully we will be blessed and healthy with another little baby um The odds of this happening again, my OB said, are so incredibly low, and he truly thinks that this was just a random occurrence, and that something just wasn't developing properly, properly, um, and so we have hopes that everything will be okay next time, and that we're able to conceive again, and it's just so hard because it took so long, and I know sometimes people take so much longer for them, but it's just like, it felt like a victory, and this feels like such a loss and such a just anyway so that's kind of where we're at right now um my body is definitely going through some issues <laughs> as far as just being so confused as what's going on the first week was definitely more like my body recovering from a surgery and like the pain with that and then this second week has been or this last week has been um, my body realizing it's no longer pregnant and so like all the postpartum things, the blood, the bleeding that goes along with postpartum, I've had milk production, um, my hormones, just a lot of those things that happen normally after I have my babies. So my body is still like, it's definitely processing everything and realizing I'm no longer pregnant but it's also just, it's trying to take care of the baby that didn't come. So, as of right now, I'm trying to get my body back to where it was. I'm taking iron. I'm trying to get all my blood work looking great again. Um, I'm still taking my prenatal vitamins. I will go back on my fertility vitamins um, once I have my cycle. And just hope and pray that we're able to conceive again and that it is successful. Um, I thank you guys so much for all of the comments on these past videos um, and you guys have been so excited it's really meant so much and it's so exciting to share that stuff with you and for those of you who do follow my Instagram and I posted this the loss on my Instagram those of you who've been so kind to me um, on there and it means so much to just not feel alone so I'm so thankful for that but just so you know I'm still going to continue this journey and I still want to share it with you um, in the best way that I can. Um, and I want to get back to my channel. I definitely need to move forward in some way. Um, so I guess the end of this video is just kind of what's going to happen from here. Um, besides obviously us trying and like just privately going through our grieving process and me getting physically better. Um, gosh, I'm looking rough. Um, I want to get back into just making videos again and just really be motivated and having something to look forward to. That's always something that I've needed in my life, which is maybe not be great, maybe not the healthiest kind of grass is greener scenario where I'm like, it'll be, if I make this, if I do all this extra decorations for Christmas, it'll be the best Christmas ever or something. I don't know. I do that a lot, but I just... I need stuff to look forward to. I need stuff to look forward to to get me motivated. And so I'm just trying to focus on my channel this year. I'm trying to focus on my girls this year. I feel like everything keeps not going our way <laughs> with obviously COVID. We live in Texas, so the cases are just really spiking. So we've made the decision to um, virtual learn this year, which is not what we had planned for either child. Eleanor's supposed to go to preschool and Ali's supposed to go to kindergarten so these are big years for the both of them and it kind of breaks my heart that that's not gonna happen this year. Again it's just like consistent disappointment um, but we decided to virtually learn and um, what we're going to do is kind of set up a classroom at my mom's house um, which is my mom and I used to run a um, home daycare slash preschool um, and so we're kind of bringing that back alive just for the two of them and kind of setting up a classroom um, environment again and so that'll be kind of fun to look forward to and I plan on bringing you guys along with that especially if you guys are doing virtual learning and teaching as well 
um, or who just homeschool or just looking for some preschool preschool advice for your little ones if you have little ones at home or whatnot um, I know this school year is going to probably look different again and so if you guys are planning on also virtually learning as well or doing that I hope that this will be something that we can do together um, I'm also planning on just kind of like adding a little extra decor and not renovating because we're in a rental but just adding a little bit of extra stuff um we're doing the girls rooms and our bathrooms and stuff like that just little projects to look forward to um we'd really anticipated and wanted to get a house this year but with the economy and everything going crazy we just feel like it's not the best move um we've been blessed with jazz to still be able to have his job and everything like that but we're just apprehensive i guess to um for lack of better words, pull the trigger on something that could be, it's such a big investment. So, and we just bought a new car. And so we're just trying to be as careful as possible. So instead we're signing our lease one more year here. And I just kind of want to make some improvements to make this place feel even more just homey and kind of just get rid of all the bad um, for whatever reason. I clean and I love watching cleaning videos and I enjoy making cleaning, cleaning videos, but it's not like my passion. It's not something that relaxes me. But for whatever reason, after this loss, it's been like a nesting thing for me. And I've been up literally at like 2.30 in the morning scrubbing down our bathrooms and our tubs and cleaning like crazy mad woman and getting rid of so many things. I don't know why. I just, it's like a weird nesting thing that's going on. So let me know below if you've done the same thing. Um, if you've had a loss um i don't know it's just been crazy i've just been like cleaning like a mad woman um and so it's been kind of nice since i haven't i've been so sick with this pregnancy and i feel like i haven't been able to really do as much so i'm excited to kind of look forward to doing more and filming more and getting back into the routine of my channel and looking forward to the school year starting and the holidays and all those things so if you're excited for that please let me know below and if you also have gone through a loss whether early or late like me um i would really love for your just encouragement and your advice and if you had any success stories afterwards and where you are with that because i'm just really struggling emotionally um and and fearful for getting pregnant again um and this happening again even though i know my chances are really low it's a very scary thing and um my chances were already so low in the beginning that it just seems like okay you know luck has not gone well for me this year with my dad's loss and this loss and just everything going on in the world which i know everybody else is involved in it's just it's been a hard year i think for everyone so i'm ready for 2020 to be over with um and i'm ready for just good things to happen and just blessings and i hope that's the same thing for you um but, like I said, if you had any advice, I would really appreciate it. And just things to look forward to on this channel are back to my normal stuff, back to fashion and beauty and home decor and cleaning. And now with virtual learning and just kind of school supplies and all of that co that comes with that, and setting up a home classroom and things like that. Um, and I know so many of you guys have asked for day in the life, um, morning routines, vlogs, just more like family life and vlogging and i just and i keep wanting to do that i just don't end up picking up the camera um and i really want to start doing that more on my channel as well one because we're home all the time like what else is there to do <laughs> um hopefully i can add interesting things but on top of that just so i have good memories to look back on um i'm so glad that i shared with you that i was pregnant and us finding out and shared it with my family fighting out that it was a boy and like the joy that we had even if it didn't last we were so excited and there was so much joy and I want to record that because it's crazy how things change and how fast things move and losing people and just loss and it's just it feels like that's so much of my life right now and so I'm trying so hard to make sure I'm remembering the joy and filming the joy and having that to look back on. So I want that too. So it's not only just sharing that with you guys, but just having it for us as well. So that is it. That's the end of this video. Thank you so much if you made it this far. Um, I just wanted to let you know what was going on and I hope that you are here to stay and I hope that you are excited for the future and 
um, I hope I can be too. Right now, I'm having a hard time looking forward, but um, I'm hopeful that it will get better. And um, I'm so thankful for the blessings that I have and the amazing two girls that I love so much and the husband and the family um, that I know so many people don't have. And so I am so thankful for the blessings I already have. And that's what I have to keep reminding myself that I have so much and that I'm not at loss. Um, but again, thank you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.